Hi viewers, this is Dr. Usman here. Welcome back to my channel. In the last two videos, I have spoken about uh, the GCC Smart Cities challenges, that what sort of challenges uh, we are facing uh, in the region. And I have also spoken about uh, the jobs uh, which will be available in the next 10 years time due to the technological adoption. And some of those jobs have not been in invented yet. So in today's video, I will be talking about a few of the disruptive technologies, in my opinion, which is going to change the way we live, the way we communicate, and the way we do business. So like in my opinion, the first um, important disruptive technology will be Hyperloop, uh, which is going to have a big impact on the way we commute or from one point to another point or from one city to another city. There are several vendors who have invested billions of dollars in testing Hyperloop technology and in order to make sure that, you know, like with the passage of time when our cities are going to be more and more populated. There is a lot of traffic issues in all the major cities uh, in the world. So how Hyperloop can basically help us. So the uh, so Virgin Hyperloop have a very successful test in the beginning of this year. Let's have a look at this video. So <clears throat> the hypersonic train carried out the first two passengers to 500 meter test track in just 15 seconds and eventually the low carbon emission pods will be able to carry up to 28 passengers initially. The company aims to create a system that moves at 1000 km per hour speed which is slightly faster than 926 km per hour cruising speed of a passenger jet. Hyperloop trip from Los Angeles to San Francisco would be only 45 minutes and people who are living in the Middle East. So for example, if we have a Hyperloop technology uh, in UAE, so from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, you will be able to commute in less than seven minutes. So normally if we are driving from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, it takes around one and a half hour or one hour, depending upon the traffic situation and your location. But with the Hyperloop technology, you will be able to commute in less than seven minutes from Dubai to Abu Dhabi and from Abu Dhabi to Dubai. So in my opinion, the biggest disruptive technology which will definitely going to happen in the next year, next 10 years time is basically autonomous cars or driverless cars. We have been talking about uh, this topic from past few years and then we see there are a lot of cars in certain cities in the world which are autonomous and which are basically uh, running very, very successfully. So as we know, the, like there are like one to five generations uh, where, where you reach to the full automation of a car will be achieved very soon. So there are several players uh, in the autonomous industry who again spend billions of dollars in order to achieve full uh, automation or uh, a driverless capability. But I would like to mention in my video uh, like the five big players in my opinion who, uh, who will be able to take the major market share in the next uh, couple of years time. So the leading one is Tesla as everyone we know then Waymo is, give, is a big competitor to Tesla we have Argo, we have Mobileye and Cruise. So I will be talking about the, the two major competitors, the Tesla and Waymo, those who are using two different type of technology. Also, it is expected that level four and level five autonomous cars will become a largest market worldwide by 2030 at 60 billion US dollar market. By 2035, North America is expected to own 29% of the world's self-driving fleet with China and Western Europe holding 24% and 20% of the autonomous cars respectively. So talking about these two major competitors, uh, Waymo and Tesla, what is the basic technological difference between both of the technology? So Waymo uses an in-house 64 beam LiDAR technology to generate a 36, 360 degree world map to predict the movement. So whatever it sees around all the objects, a road, whatever it comes in, it creates a 360 objects for that by using LiDAR technology. And Tesla basically relies on computer vision for building a visual picture of surrounding using the forward looking camera technology by Mobileye. So Tesla technology is basically relying more and more on to the cameras or sensors which is all around the car or inside the car while the Waymo is basically focusing more and more on to uh, capturing the 360 degree uh, map using its radar or LiDAR technology basically what we call. They 
use a range of technology we've built from the ground up to understand the world around them and get you where you need to go. You're about to see how it all works and what it feels like to ride in our car. As it drives, Waymo uses LiDAR, which sends out millions of laser beams per second to build up a detailed picture of the world all 360 degrees around it. It also uses radar to detect how far away objects are and their speed. And high-resolution cameras detect visual information, like whether a traffic signal is red or green. It then combines all that data to understand the world around it. For example, in this fraction of a second, it knows exactly where it is on the road. It can also identify everything around it in full 360 degrees. With all that knowledge, it can plan a safe path ahead. In this instance, giving that cyclist enough room to cycle past us, and also looking out for that pedestrian on the sidewalk. A few other uh, differences apart from the technology, like uh, Waymo is a subsidiary of Alphabet, uh, which is a separate uh, commercial unit now of a self -drive, Google self-driving basically car project, while Tesla is like an American automotive and energy company which specialized it in electronic cars. So Google used powerful computer simulation and feeds from its fleet of cars that are in testing and in real uh, uh, streets. So a like, lot of uh, Waymo vehicles are already on the streets in different cities in the United States. So Tesla relied on real world data collected from hundreds of thousands of Tesla being driven by human drivers. So they keep capturing the data. So I think more than 300 plus thousand cars of Tesla is also on the road, uh, driven by different type of uh, uh, like drivers in different. Now that's another disruptive technology is basically the artificial intelligence and robotics. So robotics are playing a major role in the manufacturing industry. And I will mention few of the industry uh, in my presentation here, where they have started taking over the human jobs. So what are those <clears throat> different types of robots are available? This is very interesting to see and what they are doing. So talking about the types of robots, the first uh, type of robots, uh, which, which are very, very successful and very precise is basically the industrial robots. So the industrial robots is a robot system used for manufacturing typical applications of robots, including welding, painting, assembly, disassembly, pick and place of printed circuit boards, packaging, labeling, uh, palletizing, product inspection, and testing all accomplished with endurance, speed, and accuracy. The second type of uh, robots, which is quite interesting, are called domestic robots. Uh, they are called uh, cleaning robots, or uh, you know, you can call them domestic robots or home robots, and they they, they serve you um, in different areas, and which is primarily um, um, and the cleaning the floors, or which is connected with your Wi-Fi. Uh, they can be the perfect companion when you when you want to talk about it, uh, talk to them. And you might have probably heard about uh, a domestic robot uh, which is called iRobot uh, Romba that will go in automated mode and clean your floors. The other type of ro robot which is making significant progress uh, in the medical industry are called medical robots. So the robots in the medical, uh, medical industry helps by revealing medical personnel from routine tasks that take their time away from uh, pressing responsibilities and by making medical procedures safer and less costly for the patient. They can also perform accurate surgery in tiny places and transport dangerous substances. So they are, they are really doing a great job uh, in the medical uh, industry and which will be taking a couple of uh, lower level jobs uh, from different uh, paramedical staffs in the coming few years time. Another type of robot which is getting a lot of popularity are called customer service robots. So for example, if you are living in Dubai, I mean you can go to RTA, you can go to Dubai Electricity Office and then you see a, a customer service robot which, which can basically inquire about your uh, issues, pay, you can pay your bills, you can launch the complaints, you can ask for the new connection. So a lot of things uh, these customer service robots um, will be doing it. And down the line I do see, I mean uh, they are going to have a major impact. Uh, to the people who are working as a customer service agents. Even if you uh, if you look at the larger uh, 
banking networks or uh, anywhere where you have a customer service automation you know like uh, so the robots can play much better role as compared to the human interaction so these robots basically they they, they give you all type of uh, like uh, customer service uh, question and answers and with the help of artificial intelligence down the line they become more and more intelligent to serve you better another type of robots which we have seen uh, which which is being utilized is called war robots or military robots so military robots are autom autonomous robots or remote controlled mobile robot designed for military application for transport to search and rescue and attack some such systems are currently in use and many are under the development so it's going to bring a revolution in the in the military industry with the adoption of such type of robots uh, or drone technologies uh, which are autonomous uh, down the line in next few years time now there is another very niche market uh, which is quite interesting is basically called entertainment robots so entertainment robots are those robots which you don't use them for the utility so those robots basically are available uh, to serve you a typical entertainment activity like singing or uh, you know like entertaining the guests uh, at your place or at your office but they got nothing else uh, apart from uh, the entertainment activities so there is a very big segment for the entertainment robots uh, and this is an another picking up industry uh, in the robotics uh, which gonna bring revolution and where i believe a lot of people will be losing their jobs with the adoption of these entertainment robots also Another uh, like disruption which is happening quite fast is the adoption of uh, blockchain uh, technology with along with artificial intelligence. So blockchain is gonna autom automate several public sector or several large scale uh, private organization processes. So for example, like United Arab Emirates, they are working on their uh, blockchain strategy, and they will be implementing the strategy by 2021. And if this technology is, is implemented properly with different use cases which they have uh, identified so dubai will be a completely paperless state uh, in the world like no paper usages so the blockchain is another uh, disruptive technology if you have the right use case for the blockchain you can basically with few clicks you can get you know like uh, uh, your like for example trade license or your uh, certificate of birth or your passport so if you automate uh, these processes using blockchain, but please keep in mind that you cannot automate everything using blockchain itself. It's highly secured, uh, highly decentralized, and you know it helps you to be highly secured as well. And it helps you to basically conduct your transactions uh, quite fastly, securely. So there are a lot of uh, countries in the world who have this uh, blockchain adoption, and they're very, very successful uh, in implementing uh, such technologies in their respective fields. Thank you very much viewers for watching this video and um, please subscribe if you like these videos and if you have any request uh, any for any particular technological, political uh, or business related topic which would you really like me to cover so I will be more than happy to uh, talk about such uh, topics, initiatives uh, on this channel. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, please give me your views, please um, comment on the videos. Uh, and looking forward uh, to talk about again more and more about politics, business, economy in my upcoming channels. And thank you very much for being such a great audience. Thanks a lot.